right, welcome back everybody. There's just been a new uh, news release on the Unearthed Arcana 2021 Mages of Strixhaven. So you can see up here, this is a playtest document that presents five subclasses. So they tell you these subclasses are special and that each one is available to more than one class. In other words, you don't have to be just a bard or just a fighter or something like that to pick one of these subclasses. Each one is available to several classes. So we'll see that as we go through them. So they mentioned these colleges here. Lorehole looks like Prismari is the name of that one. Quandrix, Silver Quill, and Witherbloom right here. So those are the five different colleges. So using these subclasses, again, each is designed to be used with multiple classes. So we'll see that under each one of the colleges. The first thing they tell you is which class can be used to select this subclass. So when you choose it, you can instead choose one of these subclass options whenever you got your class going and so on. At higher levels, as you go up to higher levels, you gain more benefits and so on, just like you see with others. So look at the first one here, Mage of Lorehold. Now notice you have to be Bard, Warlock, or Wizard to select this subclass here. So again, they're giving you a whole lot bigger, wider range of options, and that's always good. They tell you forces that underlie and drive history are what these mages are all about. So using this subclass, whenever they select it, they're going to gain two features, Lorehold Spells and Ancient Companions. So what are these two things? So when you get the lore hold spells, it looks like right off the bat you get a cantrip, Sacred Flame, and a first level spell, Comprehend Languages. And then as you advance in levels, you pick up additional spells. And of course, we've already seen this with other subclasses. Nothing new about any of that right there. But look at this other thing you get, Ancient Companion. Call on the spirits of the ancient dead and house them temporarily in the remnants of old statues. Basically, you get something like a little fighting familiar to go right along with you. So, don't need the old familiar spell right here. You can just summon up a spirit, put them in a statue, and well, they'll go right along with you. So, they tell you they're going to inhabit a medium freestanding statue. There's a stat block down below that shows what exactly it can and can't do. And also, when you create this little statue companion, you decide, do you want to be a specialized healer, sage, or warrior? So depending on which one of those three you pick, it's going to have some different abilities as we see down here. So they talk about the usuals in action. You can spend things like a first level slaughter hire and heal up your ancient companions. So you can keep this individual right here healed and going longer with your spell slots. And here they have the information on this individual. Medium construct, any alignment. So armor class looks like 14 natural. And if you chose the warrior, which is one of the three options, going to be 16. There's how the hit points are calculated. Speed 30, just as you would expect. There's the stats and all the individual things here. Saving throws, skills, immunity, so on down the line. So notice if you pick the sage, which was one of the three options, it gets this benefit down here. If you pick the healer, it gets this one right here. And if you pick the warrior, this one here. And I won't read all this individually word for word or all this would probably end up taking forever. So it looks like at level six, you'll gain something called lessons of the past. Gain the following additional benefits. So it looks like depending on the type of spirit you chose, you might get this healer option. Looks like your hit point maximum is going to go up. If you chose the sage, you get advantage on some ability checks and some additional force damage. If you chose the warrior, you can cast a cantrip that can make one, we or excuse me, when you use an action to cast a cantrip, you can make one weapon attack that deals an additional 1d8 radiant damage. Level 10, something called War Echoes. You can use your reaction to force a target to make a wisdom saving throw against your spell save DC. On a failure, the target becomes vulnerable to one to one of the damage types dealt by the attack. So you can make them vulnerable to future attacks. Maybe attack them with fire or electricity or whatever. Now they're going to take more damage from it in the future. Interesting little addition there. Then at level 14, History Whims. As a bonus action, you can enter a state of chronal chaos. So it looks like here you gain one of the following benefits of your choice. 
If it's luck, saving throw against an effect that deals damage, you get an additional d6 roll. Resistances. You have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Wow, that's a good one there. That's going to be a popular one. Swiftness. Your movement speed increases by 15 and you don't provoke opportunity attacks. So get a choice of those right there. Looks like next right here, the second one, is Mage of Prismari. Now notice here you'd have to be Druid, Sorcerer, or Wizard to pick up this subclass here. Again, there's always limitations as to what class and such you start off as. So it looks like these guys like to specialize in elemental power. So when you pick this subclass here, you're going to gain two fe features, creative skills and kinetic artistry. So what's the creative skills? You gain proficiency in any one of the two following, acrobatics, athletics, nature, performance right there. In addition to this, you can Dash is a bonus action. When you take this bonus action, choose one of the following additional effects. So when you dash, you get to add something to it. First one, Boreal Sweep. Icy water swirls around you until the end of your turn. You can move across the surface of water as if it were solid ground. So you get to walk on water. It looks like any creature close to you can be knocked prone. Wow, that's a really good one right there. Scorching Whirl involves flames. You can force each creature within five feet to make a deck saving throw. On failure, they're going to take fire damage. Looks like that first one up there might be the better of the two. Excuse me, three. Right, here's another option. Thunderlight Jaunt that involves lightning. You can move through the space of other creatures and you do not provoke opportunity attacks. Like you can actually pass through solid objects there. Level six, favored medium. Choose one of the following, cold, fire, lightning, and you gain resistance to it. Could be helpful there. Then you get this aura. Extends out five feet. While the aura is active, each creature of your choice has resistance to your damage resistance type. So that one's all about protection. Level 10 here. Once per turn, when you deal damage to at least one target, you gain an additional effect. So it looks like you could get a cold effect an actual 1d6 extra right there and you could also reduce a target speed so there's one of your options then you got the fire so you can do fire damage instead of cold like we had on that other so it looks like you can also gain uh, the chosen creature and you can gain some temporary hit points right there so looks like you got a plus and a minus on that one there lightning 1d6 lightning damage somebody has to make a dexterity saving throw on a fail uh they're unable the target is unable to take reactions until the end of its next turn as lightning shocks them so each one of those cold fire and lightning has its own little different effects then at level 14 you gain proficiency in dexterity saving throws and you can treat a d20 roll of a nine or lower as a 10 so have a minimum of a roll of 10 right there then they have the third different college here mage of quandrix so here you got to be a sorcerer or wizard to pick this subclass right here says these individuals can alter reality on a whim. They can warp the fundamentals of space and self. So using this subclass, gain two features, quandric spells and functions of probability. So what are these things right here? Well, looking at the quandric spells, you learn the cantrip guidance and the first level spell guiding bolt. And then of course you can pick up some other spells at different levels like we've seen before. Here's the other one, functions of probability. When you cast a spell using a spell slot that targets at least one creature, you can choose that creature or another within 30 feet, including yourself, to add an effect. So it looks like the first effect you could add is diminishing function. Roll a d6 and subtract the number rolled from the next attack roll. So that help you to keep from getting hit. And then supplemental function, the chosen creature can roll a d6 and add the number rolled to an attack. So you can take a d6 away from an opponent's attack roll or add one for yourself. Looks like a chosen creature could be somebody other than you. <laughs> then at level 6, velocity shift right here. We go up the top, force a creature to make a charisma saving throw against your spell save DC, which it can choose to fail. On a failure, the creature is teleported. So you could actually teleport an ally or it looks like with an opponent right there and move them away too. Null equation, level 10 right here. 
Let's see, you can force a creature to make a constitution saving throw against your spell save DC. On a failure, the creature has disadvantage on strength and dex saving throws, and its weapon attacks only deal half damage. So that could be big right there. Level 14, Quantum Tunneling. You gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Wow, that's a good one right there. And additionally, you can move through other creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain. So it gives you a lot of pluses at level 14. Now we have another college, Mage of Silver Quill. Bard, Warlock, and Wizard subclass, right? So you got to be one of those three if you want to pick this one right here. So using this subclass, you get two features. Eloquent Apprentice and Silvery Barbs. So the first one, Eloquent Apprentice right here, you learn one cantrip of your choice, either Sacred Flame or Vicious Mockery. Additionally, you gain proficiency in your choice of the two following skills. You could pick one, a couple of those right there. Then you get this Silvery Barbs. Immediately after a creature you can see within 60 feet succeeds on an attack roll, an ability check or saving throw, you can use your reaction to demoralize the creature. Unless the creature is immune to being charmed, it re-rolls the 20 and must use the lower. So you could force them to re-roll something they just did. If the attack roll, ability check, or saving throw then fails, you can choose a different creature you can see within 60 feet of you. It says you can choose yourself. That creature is empowered and can re-roll one attack roll, ability check, or saving throw themselves. So it takes away from an opponent and adds to you or an ally right there. So what have we got here at level 6? Inky Shroud. You learn the darkness spell. When you cast the spell, you can see normally through the darkness created. And when a creature you can see starts its turn in the darkness, you can deal 2d10 psychic damage. So you get darkness, you can see through it and deal additional damage. Level 10, Infusion of Eloquence. When you cast a spell that deals damage, you can invoke additional words of power to change the spell's damage type to your choice of Psychic or Radiant. So you can alter your damage type here. Any creature damaged by the spell takes extra damage equal to your proficiency bonus and has its emotions swayed with despair or adoration based on the damage type dealt. So up here, if you chose Psychic, the creature's going to be frightened. If you choose Radiant, the creature's charmed. So it gives you options there. Word of Power, level 14. So down here, you can invoke a Word of Power that is the pinnacle of your magical study. You get the following options. First one, Deadly Despair. Give the target vulnerability to a damage type. Other options, Selfless Invocation. Grant the creature resistance to that damage. So could help out an ally right here or harm one who's your an opponent. And then it looks like lastly we have Mage of Witherbloom. Here you got to be a Druid or Warlock to pick this subclass right here. So it's like, just like the other ones, you get two features. Witherbloom Spells and Essence Tap. So with Witherbloom Spells, you learn the cantrip Spare the Dying and first level Cure Wounds or Inflict Wounds, whichever one you want right there. So like with the others, you pick up some spells at different levels right there. And then also something called Essence Tap. You can draw on a reservoir of life essence to empower yourself for one minute or until you use this feature again. So what can you do with this Essence Tap? Looks like one thing is Overgrowth. Regain a number of hit points, right? So that'd be helpful there. And then you get something else you could use called Withering Strike. When you deal damage, you can change the damage type to necrotic, and you ignore resistance to necrotic damage. So I'm going to let you do additional damage there. Level 6, Witherbloom Brew. So you get proficiency with herbalism kits, and you get to create your own magical brews. So what kind of brews can you make? One of them's fortifying. Choose a damage type from this list, cold, fire, necrotic, poison, radiant. A creature can drink the brew or administer it to another creature as an action. The recipient gains resistance to, to the chosen damage type for an hour. So it gives you resistance to these damages. Quickening. Recipient regains 2d6 hit points in one disease. Our condition from this list ends. So they could be charmed, frightened, paralyzed, poisoned, or stunned and end it. And then toxifying. Apply this brew to a weapon. 
Here you're going to deal 2d6 poison damage, and they'll have to make a con saving throw against your spell save DC or be poisoned for one minute. And then level 10, Wither Bloom Adept. When you deal necrotic damage or restore hit points using a spell, one target of the spell takes additional damage or regains additional hit points equal to your proficiency bonus. And then level 14, Withering Vortex. Here you've got when you cast a spell using a spell slot that deals necrotic damage to any number of creatures that aren't undead or constructs, choose one of the creatures that took damage. You can drain an amount of life energy equal to half the damage dealt to the chosen creature. One creature other than yourself that you can see within 30 feet regains a number of hit points equal to the life energy drains. You do damage and healing all at the same time. So there's a quick little overview of the PDF of these five new colleges. I'll see if maybe I can organize this into something else a little bit further along. That way it's a little bit easier to see what each one of these colleges will give to you. But there's a start on it. Hope you enjoyed this right here. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.